I've done it! After months of studying the most successful content creators on the platform, I've finally broken the algorithm. Now, I'm, there's a lot of small details and minutiae. It gets really complicated, so I'm gonna try and break down my formula in a way that everyone can understand. Popular subjects plus timely, preferably good, content releases equals success. <laughs> I've cracked it. <laughs> yes. So with that in mind, guys, here is my early review of My Hero One's Justice. That game came out like two months ago. Excuse me, what? The story presented in My Hero One's Justice is, as one would expect, a light rehashing of the events of the anime. Or the manga, I guess, if you're feeling pretentious. We jump into things with Deku undertaking his internship with Gran Torino. And by undertaking his internship, I mean a tutorial fight where Deku beats the piss out of an incontinent old man. At first, I was kind of surprised at our starting point. I mean, the internships are roughly a season and a half into the show, so that is a lot of content to just leave on the cutting room floor. But then I remembered that that's about the time when Deku develops full cowl and becomes something kind of resembling a playable character. I mean, a fighting game where the protagonist is a one-shot glass cannon for the first half does seem like a questionable gameplay design choice, so I'm on board. The plot unfolds through a kind of story flowchart, each stop along the way consisting of either a fight or an, air quotes, cutscene. Really, only a few select story moments have actual cutscenes. These in-engine cinematics are faithfully recreated scenes from the show that are more or less just fine. That's a rainfall review hot take. It's just fine. Everything else, however, is your bog standard manga panel storyboard thing, with the voice actors from the show screaming the plot at you. If you think they just put in the minimum effort to string together each of the story missions, you would be correct. They didn't even take the time to select quality images for each panel. I mean, God, who let this one through? I know Momo's a pretty scantily clad character, but this still of her looks like that genre of hentai where the artist makes the subject like 40% thicker than they normally are. As you're probably aware, there really aren't that many individual conflicts in My Hero Academia. So while the campaign is reasonably brief, consisting of the encounter with Stain all the way to the showdown between All Might and All For One, the story manages to pad itself out in a tolerable way. For example, the showdown with Stain takes place over four different fights, letting you play as Tenya, Midoriya, and Todoroki as they aggressively feed into Stain's lane like they're trying to start an inner city soup kitchen, and then one final time as a group, just like it went down in the show. Hold on, Stain's quirk only paralyzes people. He is a normal human physique. If you guys hit him from two sides with your quirks like that, the torque on his neck and spine is gonna end, he's dead. You, of course, get to play through all the notable scenarios in between, such as Aizawa's fight with Dobby and Deku and Bakugo's exam with All Might, as well as several what if encounters. Fights that didn't take place in the show, but believably could have, such as various training sessions between the members of Class 1A. Upon completing the hero story, you are then able to play again from the villain's perspective. The fights all unfold in the same way and share the same outcome, so don't go in expecting some sort of alternative universe fan fiction where we get to see what can make a man of all for one's age so, uh, frequently invigorated. And after all of that, spoilers, I guess, you get to play through the tournament arc. Important to note that this is the only section of the story that I legitimately struggled on. You know the kind of challenge when the game is perfectly balanced and tests your knowledge of its mechanics and your skills as a player leading to an incredibly satisfying sigh of relief when you finally overcome it? That is not the kind of challenge this is. In specific, it's the last two fights where you take on Kirishima and Todoroki as Bakugo, who is, in my opinion, one of the stronger characters in the game and is someone I practiced with a lot. But actual skill doesn't really matter when the computer deals double fucking damage! I eventually had to win by cheesing Todoroki out of the ring. Was not happy afterwards, but it was also the kind of victory that Bakugo would have been upset about, so in that sense, it's kind of canon. Yes. Suck it, Todoroki. Suck it. Nice. Round one, ready? Crash! My Hero 1 Justice's gameplay is that of an arena-style fighter. Now, 
Before you let that put you off, it is one of the more snappy, responsive arena fighters I've ever played. Believe me, I know it looks one way on the surface, but the level of control you have over your fighter's movement, mixed with the immensely satisfying combos and the ability to cancel out of pretty much everything, sets the stage for a combat system that is way more fun than it really has any right to be. So the setup is what you would expect. You got your health bar, a super meter, and a gauge indicating how much punishment your guard can take before breaking. Fighters have three basic attacks, a physical strike and two separate quark attacks, as well as the ability to dash around the arena. Additionally, you have access to two other key move types. Smashes, attacks that grant you super armor, this yellow aura that makes it so you can't be interrupted by normal attacks, and breakers, attacks that give you a red aura and let you interrupt an opponent in super armor. While these are powerful tools, you can't just go around spamming them and expect to win. A poorly timed smash can be punished in all manner of ways, my favorite of which being countering with my own smash, tanking the opponent's attack, and finishing the exchange with a follow-up combo. Fighters can be broken down into two broad styles. Close-range brawlers, whose strategy consists of jockeying for advantageous angles on their opponent, landing the first hit leading into a satisfying combo before launching them across the map, repeat ad nauseum, and long-range fighters who keep their opponents at a comfortable distance by spamming assorted knives and syringes and at least two different kinds of fire that are suspiciously selective about what they will and will not set ablaze. There are a multitude of different moves in each of the fighters' arsenals, all of which are executed in the same way but have wildly different effects. So while there's really only one set of commands you need to practice, the associated attacks differ drastically from fighter to fighter. This makes learning the character's movesets the primary challenge and not the inputs themselves, a feature that makes trying out new fighters a much more approachable experience for the casual player. The combat has more depth than I expected, possessing the capacity for nuanced tactics and adapting to your opponent's fighting style and punishing predictable patterns. Another integral part of the combat system is support characters, Fighters that can be called in to give you a hand extending a combo, or attack your opponent when you're the one getting comboed, or just wasted frivolously because you had no idea what they were going to do when they arrived! Not to name in any names here, Asui. And of course we have your supers. Three different levels of devastating attacks that for all intents and purposes should be killing their recipient. I mean, God, these guys are friends, right? Jesus Christ, Kirishima, not everyone's as durable as you do. You can stop and think before you go too far, and he's dead. You killed him. One of the major reasons for Hiroaka's mass popularity is the strength and diversity of its cast. Pretty much everyone can identify with at least one member of Class 1A, prompting strong connections to characters we may not even get to spend that much time with. Additionally, there's the waifu factor. Now, I know there's going to be a big debate about this in the comments, so let's just go ahead and address this right now. Momo is best girl. Objectively. She is literally number one. Additional fun fact, Toga is hot garbage. Now, I know so many Toga fans might have a hard time grasping this, so let me illustrate my point with this handy visual aid. Now, as you can see, the dog represents you, and the garbage can, your waifu. That's right. Fucking trash. Okay, okay, the point is the character roster is likely the key to whether or not you're gonna enjoy this game. Each member of the cast has their own distinct feel. No two fighters play exactly the same, many possessing completely unique playstyles and movesets that really ring true to their character. While I'm sure that most of the members of Class 1A would make for interesting fighters, regrettably, not everybody made it. <laughs> and I mean, thank God, right? Can you even imagine what someone like Mineta would play like? What's his super gonna be? Pulling out anal beads like he's starting a lawnmower? <laughs> Here at Rainfall Review, I put a lot of work into my content. Some might even say that I go... Plus ultra. <laughs> Now, highbrow jokes and animations like this are time consuming to create and are only possible thanks to support from you guys. So if you're enjoying the video, consider subscribing to the channel, maybe even hit that little bell icon and, you know, maybe share the video with a friend. And if you too would like to go plus ultra, like a longtime contributor and friend of the channel, Sean Van Pelt, consider supporting me on Patreon. Now, let's get back to the thing. All right, one more time. Whoa!
Yes. I earned this. It was like 30 hours of work. I earned this. I earned this! The game reports 15 stages, but in reality, it's just 12 stages, with three of them having night themes. And realistically, the stages are all nearly identical anyway. They're each essentially just large cubes with varying numbers of interactable walls and or the capacity for a ring out. If you hit your opponent hard enough into a wall, they will get stuck in it, becoming vulnerable for a few seconds, providing you the opportunity to extend a combo. Dashing over to them will shift the gravity of the stage, temporarily making that wall the floor. This allows for some inception level, I will lead them on a merry chase, rotating room fights, that will call into question the game's understanding of what it means to fall down. The ring out stages, I guess, incentivize you to be a little bit more careful about your positioning, but ultimately, all of the characters can basically fly regardless of quark, so uh, who gives a shit? The environments are highly destructible, but it's purely superficial and done in a way that projectile vomits mediocrity. Every interactable inch of a stage is separated into large cells of a grid and only shows damage in those cells individually. It's kinda hard to put into words, but it feels less like the stage becomes ravaged by battle and more like a bored high schooler was aimlessly popping bubble wrap. Not to mention that everything falls apart like it was built from tissue paper. You mean to tell me that this cement lip, supported by cement columns, can't support the weight of a single 15-year-old waifu? What are they feeding these kids? Outside of story mode, you have your local and online multiplayer modes. Local is... Uh, I mean, like, you get it, right? I, I, I don't need to... No? No? Okay, we're good. Okay, good. My experience with the online play was quite positive. The quality of the connections between me and my opponents was always stellar with only minor graphical hiccups during the intro scenes. If you're looking to squeeze any modicum of longevity out of this game, it's going to be through grinding ranks and multiplayer. The other major mode is mission mode, where you select a party of three to undertake a series of progressively more difficult and difficult fights that implement special conditions such as opponents dealing double damage, fighting without your supports, and testing the limits of your patience on stream. Your fighters gain experience and levels as you progress, as well as receive single-use items that don't carry over from mission to mission, so don't be afraid to spend them up between fights. The mode is a fine distraction, but there's just not the same level of counterplay versus the computer as there is versus another person. The computer can be random and cheap, while people are... also assholes? So, pick your poison, I guess. All right, first let's get one goddamn thing straight. The Otsuko loading image? Fucking adorable. Cool, now that the uh, really serious criticism's out of the way, let's get into the more uh, frivolous stuff. The game really captures the over-the-top-ness of the anime with its graphics and animations, and the sound design supports it beautifully. Additionally, the character models are all excellent recreations of their anime counterparts, and for the most part, look fabulous in motion except for when they're just trotting about the arena. I mean, I'm happy the cast of Hiroaka mostly forgoes the patented Naruto run. Mostly. Tenya. But to be honest, they all look a bit silly, pumping their arms like they're trying to inconspicuously hurry to the bathroom. The character details extend past just their appearance and special moves. When Bakugo breaks into a dash both on the ground and in the air, he propels himself forward with alternating small blasts from his palms or Deku, who emits the crackling green energy of All For One, or everyone else without quarks that aid their mobility, just getting kind of a generic whoosh. As for other animations, they're kind of hit or miss. Most of the supers look great, and even give some of the fighters a nice opportunity to really show us their character, like, it's hard to get more Otsuko than OS, followed promptly by vomiting. And Jiro, I mean, I don't remember specifically what it was about her at the time of writing this, but I wrote it down in my notes, so it's worth mentioning. Ah, yeah, there it is. As for the misses, it's not that they're unwatchable, but they are lacking that extra measure of detail to really sell the moment to us. Midoriya's victory animation seems half-hearted and unconvincing with his mouth awkwardly agape, and Bakugo's looks like it paused two seconds too early in a wonky, off-balance posture. These and many others are just unsatisfying, really could have stood to have been labored a bit harder. One of the major features touted here in Japan was the customizable costume loadouts. 
The various costume items you gather throughout just playing the game can certainly be used to make your favorite fighters look unique. But regrettably, unique in this context does not necessarily mean good. The curated items tend to make your fighter fall into one of two different camps style-wise. Cringe-inducing edgelord and comedic Japanese talent. They also have a special item for those of us from Portland who want to keep it classy and just put a bird on it. Is your female protagonist mostly naked? Put a bird on it. Put, put a, a bird, bird on, on it. it. But my Naruto's green. Put, put a, a bird, bird on it. it. This girl's a frog. Put, put a, a bird, bird on, on it. it. It's so pretty. You like that, ma'am? Fantastic. Put, put a bird on it. Put, put a bird on, on it. it. And the meme's dead. I killed it. In the end, guys, My Hero One's Justice is about as much fun as you can have with an anime brawler. The interesting counterplay and the awesome roster make for a solid experience. Now, I'm certainly not saying it's going to be featured in the next EVO or anything, but it's certainly the highest quality or one of the highest quality anime brawlers I've ever played. And having said that, the, uh, the content on offer is a bit sparse, so it's far more worthy of like a red box rental rather than a full price purchase. So unless you're an absolute hero Aka zealot, I cannot recommend you pick this up at full price. With all that in mind, guys, My Hero One's Justice, while a good time, gets a rating of, oh, so close. Thanks for checking out my review, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, I'm guessing you did, so maybe consider subscribing and or checking out some of my other videos. All of them are like entertainment, kind of like this one with a real review sprinkled in there. So go ahead and give them a look. We got a, a, one I really like I did about lesbian witches that doesn't have the views it probably should. Uh, so go ahead and check that one out. Um, if you really want to get involved in the community, go ahead and uh, join us on Twitch, join our community Discord. Again, check me out on Patreon if you want to support the channel. If not, no worries. I'm just happy to make content for you guys. And uh, yeah, that's, that's everything. So in the meantime, I guess we're done here.